you have to have two forms of ID and I run through that. Um, so really what it, we try to make sure everybody understands it. Then we all meet on the platform whenever it's scheduled. The attorney is there, the clients are there. We run through the official things we have to do for the Avon. And then I hand it over to the attorney who runs through the documents with their client and they sign. Then those documents are express mailed or dropped back off to me at the office. And then I can add my specific notary language, which is different for the remote online or the online audio video online notarization. It's a different notary language that goes on the document. Yeah, I might have to have you jump in on a class when I teach my <laughs> e signature course. <laughs> Happy to. Happy to. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's good information because they just give me, you know, it's very vague. And mm -hmm. I knew that the order was signed, but I was like, how does this work? Oh, oh, cool. Thanks. That's cool. You're very welcome. It was crazy. After the order was signed, like literally within the hour, I had so many phone calls from people that wanted to FaceTime and Zoom and do other things to notarize documents. And then Right, because just... I have a notary. I'm a notary, but I was like, I'm sure they won't let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> Something told you. Right. Yeah. So, Randy, and... is it night? You, you make it look like it's like 80 degrees outside, except the jacket. I was it pretty say, nice. It's uh, not bad in the sun. Yeah, it looks nice out there. Yeah. Your, your camera went away, but it could be because you're on your phone. Sometimes it kicks us off. That could be. Hey, there you are. You're on your porch or something, aren't you? Yeah, enjoying the outside. Oh, I'm jealous, let me tell you. Yeah. I'm look, I just needed to warm up. I, I, yeah. So I, on Instagram, I've been posting that you should start your garden inside. So I started my garden inside. Mm -hmm. And now I'm at a point where I need to transfer it. That's where I'm at, too. So I'm thinking about going to Menards and getting something bigger because it's my egg cartons aren't working out anymore. Mm. <laughs> I know. And then we're supposed to have that freeze or something this weekend. So yep. no. yeah, you want to, yeah, Maybe it's going to be fun. It was know. snowing around me not too long ago. So <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm done. No. So I don't want to hear that. With, with Carrie's lead in and Teresa talking about the online notary, um, I, let's just get this started. So this is the virtual agent, um, le you know, living lean virtually, having that platform. It's why Carrie's here. Um, I asked her if she'd show up. She said she could for a few minutes. So I don't want to lose the time that she's around for this. Um, so I, I think it's really good for all of us to kind of just sit there and talk a little bit about the tools that we can use from a virtual environment, from um, you know, virtual tours, virtual showings, to how you're running your business these days, to um, how you're communicating with your folks and things like that. And maybe, maybe even some hardware conversations, because to be honest with you, I'm watching some virtual open houses and I feel like I'm on a roller coaster ride because I I'm think we need a list of, them. you need to buy all this stuff or, or really, I don't know, Teresa, if you have these, but it would be cool. If this, this is all you need to do a oh, virtual yeah. open house. Yeah. You got this. So, you, you need because we're like and maybe it's my age but i'm a little shaky so but if you have a pop socket on the back right. of your um on the back your of your phone device. you just can hold your phone like this well that would be the camera and then you can walk around and it's steady just mm -hmm. simple embrace on yourself yeah mm -hmm. oh you mean like yeah you use yourself instead of yeah yeah simple. if you brace you don't bounce as much and it's actually really nice. So yeah, having those pop, although I will never have a pop socket, I just brace and hold it up. Um, I, have, I have multiple um, holders. The cases that have the pop socket, phone. that's so what I, I have. I have one on here and then I have, I have some without. Yeah, so that's, it, it's sad that TJ Maxx isn't open, but just saying. You can order anything online. Right. Order anything online. Yeah, <laughs> I pretty much get a package a day right now. Oh, I'm um, trying to think if I should even get up to show you some of this stuff I have. Yeah, I've got I've got a nice little stabilizer. Well, and that's what I was going to mention. I have uh, stabilizers. I Here, think I'll are let you huge talk while you get it. in in that environment. So if you're not familiar with stabilizers, they're known as gimbals a lot. A lot of professional camera holders have them. They have them out there, and it's just so people can walk around and they will absorb the bounce up and down. But uh, within the last four years or so they have now created some for phones. Oh. And one of my favorites that I have, and I've watched other people do this, one of my favorites in here is, uh, it's called a Moza Mini Me. And all you do is hook up to your phone. It's, it's $99 online, Amazon. It's a great little price point. And you can pan around and it's clean, it's easy. 
It's very, very easy to use. Oh, she's even got one that's even a little more hardware than mine. So it's, it's, it holds your phone and then you can walk around like this. Oh. Here, I'll show you. I'll yeah, put my yeah. phone on it. How much was that one, Carrie? It might have been 20 bucks. I'll look oh, it up right, while so we're went, sitting here. Yeah. And I've had it for a while because I'm a little, I'm a techie. I, I have issues like Justin, but you can put a microphone on top of it. But let's just say, just go, and it might come that way. Oh, I'm sorry. The microphone can go here. And if you had a tripod, you can put the tripod here so I can have a microphone and a light. Although you don't even have to use it that way. You could just simply put your phone in. How frequently would you guys, would you guess that you use those tools? Is this something that as an agent you employ every day? Is it something that you do when you go out to do your virtual tours? When are you using? See, awesome. I have, I'm showing you. See, I need that set up. <laughs> right. Natalie's like, oh, let's go shopping. Oh, just right. between Justin and I will send you some links. Yeah. So, Maybe we can just hire Carrie to just purchase all these and give us a turnkey system, new business. Well, I'll just send you the <laughs> so here, like this is my, this is clamped to my desk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, when I sit down, if I have to, um, if I have to talk to an agent, I just plug, put my phone there and turn the light on and I can have a conversation with an agent. If I'm, and now this is, if I'm in the kitchen, I can use my iPad and look at a recipe or watch TV or have a conversation with the family or the virtual uh, right now uh, hangout. But this is how you use the phone. Oh. It's a stabilizer. Yeah. And it's, you don't have to use anything else and you can hold it. And if you did want to put it on a tripod, I can just use the tripod that's been in my house probably for 20 years because I have cameras from way back. Here, I'll go see if I can tell you what it costs. Awesome. Well, yeah, and I like that. And like I said, I went up and I went up another notch. For me, I use mine fairly often, but because I'm out about walking when I'm doing my videos mm -hmm. and doing my little things, I'm walking, so I don't want to see the bouncing. <clears throat> and I take long mm -hmm. strides. So it's a big bounce. Um, so I do that. I, anytime I'm doing video that I'm outside doing things like that, I'm doing, I'm actually used, I'll use mine today. It's outside of real estate, but I'll use mine today. My niece has some things. She's got to send one of her soccer coaches. So we'll record her that way and do it. But mine's a little more, mine's a lot more complicated than hers. Um, but I like it because it's for $99 all in one stand. It's there. I have little uh, buttons that I can rotate left or right, up or down. Makes life really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And then can I don't have to us? brace on myself. I'm sorry? Do you have it next to you to show? I, I will grab it. I'll grab okay. it here in a second. Um, it's in another room, but I'll grab it here in a second. Um, so, yeah, I think the stabilizers are real nice. I, I, I like them. Actually, you know what? I will share my screen here in a second because I can pull it up on Amazon because that's where I got it from. Oh, excellent. Um, it looks like Carrie's got another tool right there too. We have, I'm sure me and her can have the war, we can have the battle. <laughs> the <laughs> I, battle. I, I did get up because I, when you, yeah. I, I do have some serious stabilizers and I, I guess what you might want, I mean, I used to actually edit a television show so I understand video. So this is a, this was about 160 bucks. They have better versions now, but literally you can put your mobile device on here. Yeah. And then once I put my mobile device on, I turn it on and then I can walk through a house and I'm fluid. I don't say go out and buy this. I go just get, you could use a regular selfie stick. You don't have to invest in all this stuff. $9.99 for a selfie stick and use what you have and don't spend a lot of money until you get to the point where you're like, okay, I need this. Well, and what I will say is our uh, Fox Valley Association actually has one on there. So I'm sure if people wanted to, they could borrow it and see if they wanted to use it or not. Yeah. So, so and I have a teenager that's going to go to college for this. So he's, he's one of these virtual graduates right now. Um, so he, so I'm going to let him do this. And I have, I have two drones, although I can't fly them and, because I'm within five miles of DuPage County, uh, uh, the uh, DuPage County Airport. But so I'm still trying to find this tripod because it's been a while. Let's see. 
We all have tripods somewhere. They're buried in a basement, most likely. Oh, I have a tripod. I mean, I have a tripod <laughs> sitting in my other room. I have, and they're really inexpensive. Um, I think what I'll do is I will. See what well, I didn't share it. So if you want to share something, you can. Um, so for me, that's the virtual tours. Again, you got tools like we have tools like Remind right now. We have tools, Zoom, where you can do the virtual tours, Facebook Live, if you want to do it that way. Only thing I'm going to tell you is if you're using Remind or anything built in from MLSs, please understand there's all sorts of branding issues and they're trying to figure out what the do's and don'ts are right now. So I'd be cautious about what you show and what you don't show as far as branding goes. But that works real well. Carrie, what else are you using for virtual tours or what else is anything in your office or anybody in your office using for virtual tours right now or virtual showings? Um, so, so far they're using FaceTime, like just their phone. So if you're just going basic, so either FaceTime or IMO. So if you have someone that has an iPhone, they're use IMO is another face-to-face -to -face tool where you can have, and IMO is an app, I-M-O and it allows you to have a conversation with your client. And it's just like using FaceTime. So, and that's free. Um, and we use IMO because my husband has a Droid and I have an iPhone. So that's worked. Yeah, it's, it's a constant fight. I don't know if that was Randy, but it's a constant argument. Th that was me. It's my wife has the iPhone, I have the Android, so. Oh, so, you, so we just need to, to help. We need to bring you up to speed. And then here comes uh I don't see the benefit Justin. of that iPhone. The yeah, apps are updated for the iPhone first. That's actually not true anymore. Okay. Thank you, you Justin. It's about 50-50. It's really not true anymore. It's not by default. Um, the, the stats broken out are different right now from Android versus iPhone. The, if I would ask you what is the most, what is the, the most popular device bought, what would you say it is? Android. Android. Every day long. It's like 60-40 right now. I, I am, an, I am an, an Android user with an iPhone. So you know, Justin, I am pro <laughs> Android. The negative is, is that I found that when I would teach, everyone had an iPhone and they made me mail my iPhone, I mean that Droid phone back in because of the, the, that they were all blowing up or whatever. Yeah, like, when you had the, yeah, yeah, the, the note So I version. never, so that's when I went to the, um, so even for real estate, it's still being used mostly realtors. It's about a 55-45 split where you're seeing more realtors using Android than iPhone. Um, so what developers are doing is there are new programs that are out there. So what realtor or programmers are doing is some still go on iPhone because it's one, it's one device, right? They're building mm -hmm. on one platform. <clears throat> but you're still seeing more and more starting to build on Android because that is where it's selling first at. And it's going from there over to iPhone because for most, for a lot of them anymore, they're finding it easier to convert over from Android to iPhone than iPhone to Android. Been finding that would be true. Programming. So you're seeing it less and less. Um, it's, it was an easy statement early, early on, and it was very, very true, but it's, it's not happening as much as it used to. Um, what you're actually seeing a lot of times is a dual launch at the same time. Um, you know, when the latest version of WordSwag went out, they came out both times. When you are talking about agents that are using um, the apps or the cameras or the stabilizers, when you look at a virtual tour, which is probably much more prevalent today than it used to be, what would you say are the, the top like three must do's for an agent? Uh, whether it's equipment, whether it's what to show, lighting. When it comes to, for a virtual tour? Mm -hmm. The top things they need to do, and, and you know, we could debate this, is I think that an agent, need, when they get to the property, whether they're holding the phone um, in their hand or a stabilizer, is they should always be, um, they should go with the horizontal view. Okay. Be and think, just think about how- So you and Marquis fight this, huh? Oh, it's a, you should see it. So, <laughs> I'm on your side on this, but me I'm and Marquis debated as well. So you can't, so think about how we, how our eyes are mm -hmm. and how we watch things. So number one, I don't care what kind of phone it is, this way, and then you need to walk slower because your depth perception, you're in the property, is not what the consumer sees. So I, I would say to anyone that has to do virtual showings, they should walk through their house and pretend like their house is the open house or the virtual showing and record it and then go back and watch it. 
Because if you do that, then you're like, oh, I need to slow down or wait a minute. And then after every room, do you want me to go through it again? And, and, take, and slow down because the, the person on the other end is not going to see it the way you see it. So those, those are the, the two things. And if you are going to record it and send it to the client later, get permission from the agent. And I mean, we could debate this because you could upload it to YouTube and make it private where you can only send it via email. Um, you just got to make sure that the, remember, this is someone else's house and someone else has the right to market it. So you got to be very careful. And I keep, even one of my scripts said that you could uh, stream through Instagram live. I changed their script. It has to be private. You can't just go live on Facebook at someone else's house. So those would be the, that's even without a stabilizer. Justin, would you do something, recommend something different or how would you approach that? Oops, can't hear you. Well, oh, sorry, I was there was noise in the background. Um, I was just going to add the thing at the end, but she just sailed it. I, for me, the biggest concern I have is get permission from all parties, <laughs> because when we take listing agreements right now, one of the things that we're finding is the consumers are assuming that when we go in and do that first picture taking, that's the marketing pictures we're taking, and we're done from there. So when we come back in the house, they've put things back in place that they did not expect to be marketed. So just be very cautious with that. Um, the other thing I would say is depending on how you're marketing it, always be cautious of your branding because as soon as you put branding out there, you cannot put it on our MLS, period. Um, they've been very, very hardcore about that. I've been talking with them quite a bit on that scenario and that's become, I think, a sticking point for this a lot where it becomes a real big challenge. Um, so for me, the branding is also another big concern. But yeah, I have, I, to, and, it, and Carrie nailed it. I think having that stabilizer is I'm essential. Gonna, I don't care if it's your body. I don't right care now. if it's the device, mm -hmm. but have something. I'm going to, uh, here, I'll even shorten it with Bitly just because it's so. Oh, are you going to put a URL in there? I found it for 21 bucks. I, there was a whole package for like a hundred and then 75. So I was trying to find just the stabilizer. Yeah, you know, you should have bought it, sold it for 35 and made some money. Right. <laughs> He's so honest. That's awesome. <laughs> so now the virtual tours, that's one way that we've seen agents shift maybe to doing those more than they would have done two months ago. What are some other virtual realities in the realtors world now that didn't exist prior to COVID? Say that again. What are some other virtual new business practices that agents are experiencing today that maybe they didn't experience two months ago? Mm, well, when it comes to um, rentals, they can't, well, we know they can't show it if someone's living there. But what I'm, what I'm, some of the new experiences are I'm having a lot of my agents realize that people still need to rent, but they don't want to go see it. So I've had a few agents see, show vacant properties and actually do all the paperwork and sight unseen people are renting. Interesting. Um, and these are a couple of agents that were closer to the city of Chicago and mm -hmm. what they've learned. And even at RMLS, we have this thing called rental beast and I have to go, I now have to go figure it out. Um, they, I think you do have to pay to be a member. That's why I have to go figure it out, but they're able to get leads from this rental beast and they're able to make an income. And I have an agent that's actually doing one to two rentals a month just because of rental beast and she's showing using FaceTime or IMO and that's how she's doing rentals. I was like, that's a whole new market. And that's on your MRED or, mm -hmm. um, yep. Just ask Justin to teach it. Yeah, no. <laughs> Cause I, well, I haven't, I mean, and, and the reason why I have to figure it out is because I had to figure out, cause these are not listings. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, so rental beast has, you have rentals and then they also have a pocket full of, um, rental communities that are on rental beast. And in order to get paid, I had to sign to pay a hundred bucks to sign up to do this. I was like, Oh, wait a minute, let me go, uh, figure this out. But it, it's actually working. Mm -hmm. And I thought what a new opportunity, especially for now we have agents that are 18. Um, and I, and, and, I know we have a few, you know, we're all from different brokerages, but 
full disclosure, I have a, I have a few agents under the age of 25 and it, and I, I had to put myself in their shoes because I didn't figure out how to figure it out until I was 19 and pregnant. And I really didn't figure it out until I was forced to go back to college and I didn't graduate for 10 years later. Uh, I mean, not until 99. So when I think about this next generation realtor and I had an agent say, Carrie, I quit college because I want to be a realtor. And I had to pause and not laugh. <laughs> I was like, okay, now you're really going to be schooled. But um, they're the ones that are re will really do well with rentals because most of them are renting. Right. It's their market. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, they know market. it. So that was one shift. Um, I've had an, a few, one of our agents has written contracts without seeing the property. And last night she actually begged her buyer, cash buyer, to go see the house that she wrote an offer on sight unseen. Do they have an escape clause in that contract or something? Okay. Or I didn't even ask the question. I was like, oh so I was on the phone with her. She's like, I'm sitting outside. We're going to see this house right now. Cause I told her we have to see it. And the buyer was at the point where I'm writing offers because everything she was seeing was gone before she bought it because it was that affordable market. Yeah. We've you know? done that too. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this from talking to a lot of business professionals, I'm seeing a lot more people exploring the 3d virtual tours, Matterport, VPix, zoom 360 or not zoom Zillow 360. And so there's something new here that I just downloaded and I have no idea what I just downloaded. So I'm going to tell you what it is. All of you are going to hear what I don't know yet. It is Welcome called, to me and Carrie's world. We download stuff and say, hey, this looks It's neat. called O, o is in um, what? O, O, ostrich. Uh, OB is in boy S studio. And it's a something new. Oh, yeah, OBS. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, okay, let me go figure this out. It al allows you to stream live. Now, none of you need to do that and download it but this is our world of all this the, we're getting technologies is being thrown at us but mm -hmm. obs would, is not new just so you know yeah you know. right so it's it's not new it's you so um <laughs> so what i'm here's another thing that i'm learning is i am someone that would prefer that you text me and or really i prefer email because i know if i see the email it's i will, will, will respond because I can, I have access to my calendar. I have access to everything. But if you, if you leave, if you send me a voice text, like I can hear it, it's like voicemail to me. And I won't, if I listen to it, now I have to remember to go back to it. So I won't even click that text because I won't, I'll forget. So I, right. It's like, I need a pen and a paper. So it's like voicemail. But what I'm learning is, is sometimes with text, it comes across poorly. So I've been using, um, I went back to um, Marco Polo. Oh yeah, yeah. And so Marco Polo is an app that allows me to send a video and then Teresa, you can send me a video and then I can send you a video and we have the stream of conversations. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. As opposed to. Forgot about that. Um, that's a, yeah, that's a good one to talk about. So as opposed to just doing FaceTime. And it's a great way to collaborate with family. Like you can have these group chats with your family as opposed to having a live Zoom where we all get together. All right, when you can't all do that. No, Marco okay, Polo, so I forgot, it's a tremendous go, app. We can go into our app app store and download that? Yes, you can. Yep. Okay, Marco Polo. Going back to Matterport, Teresa, they just had a, a new iPhone app mm -hmm. uh, that will... You can do the 3D scans yourself. It makes them more cheaper and more accessible. So what would matter for you could do them? Ooh. Yeah, yeah through, so, the, through the app. Randy, yeah. I haven't read it yet. Does How is it doing? Is it is it just using um, some mapping algorithms? Because the Matterport tool itself is designed to use lasers to do it all. So when you're using Matterport, you're getting real dimensions, real, you know, you're getting real life, what's going on there. Most of the tools that do the iPhone stuff is... Um, is an assumption modeling tool. Do you well, know what Before you answer that, I have a question. How long do you plan on being here? Because I do need to jump on that other Zoom. We're here probably for the next 20 minutes or so. Okay, I'll see if I can come back. I added the link for the stabilizer and I put in Marco Polo. And then if you do this again, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you, okay. Carrie. Thank you. All right, see you. Bye. Bye. I haven't uh, used the app. I don't have an iPhone. Uh, but you can download the app. And I know your first scan is free, so you can test it out. 
after that, it's nine ninety nine a month for five scans a month, which That's is awesome. typically. That's I mean, what real what what typical realtor is doing more than five listings a month? That's so huge, Randy. Five. I didn't. Even, I mean, knew it was out. I didn't realize it was out yet, though. I got you, Justin. You're all over it, man. You're all over it. I love it. That's why we do it. these things. I love it. Yeah. That's if awesome. someone hasn't been operating their office in a virtual, like they they used to go into the brick and mortar facility and we just can't do that today. Uh, what is the biggest challenge as an agent that you have faced with that change in our market? The biggest thing, that's why I was hoping Carrie was here and I should, we should have went that way first. <laughs> Um, cause I think Carrie's got that nailed really well. Carrie has that and she's pretty much, she has a brick and mortar office, but she has pretty much ran her office virtually since she opened it. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the first things that she did is she joined, uh, Facebook workplace. Mm -hmm. And in there you can have all your agents in there and she has all these channels of conversations that are in Facebook where people can come in, they can look at the training schedule, look at all that stuff. She can communicate with them as their needs. Now she's doing other ways too, but it's in there right. and designed for that. She really nails that very, very well. Um, and that's where I'm seeing some people do, you know, it's, it's a delicate balance today that we're seeing from agents getting the information they need to get mm -hmm. and feeling way overwhelmed with just too much stuff. You know, about two, three weeks ago, I joked that, my inbox should be at zero by now since we've had a month off and I'm at inbox 4,000. So I went the actual <laughs> opposite direction, yeah. right? I'm getting way too many emails. Uh, and not that they're not important because, you know, everyone's giving us extremely valuable stuff. PPP. Um, I was listening to something from my office talking about another grant program out there, right? There's all sorts of hugely information, but for me, it's that communication. It's that common thread where people can go and communicate and have those conversations um, without feeling overwhelmed. And that's why, I mean, I really do like the Facebook workplace. I think it does a really good environment for that. It's really clean. It's just coming specifically from the office. Don't have to worry about any extra people coming in and saying things that they don't need to hear about. Mm -hmm. um, I also like tools like Slack, Asana, um, Trello. I always like those tools because they're more task management, project management, but they have an internal communication tool that just keeps you siloed so you don't have to worry about all the extra stuff and people can just pay attention to what they need to focus on when they're there. So when you look at a virtual, let's call it a day at the office in the virtual world, as an agent, are you looking, obviously if you've got a listing presentation, you're gonna to have to work on that and that is almost done in a platform today that isn't as face-to-face -face as it used to be. Then you've got, um, I think a lot of the tools that you've mentioned for getting that listing up and online. But how about generating business? Are there ways that agents can work towards generating business virtually since they can't get that FaceTime with their clients? So it's interesting, and this will be a small pitch for what I'm doing here in a couple of weeks. Um, I'm actually running a business builder course starting in about, well, Amazing. what is today? In about 10 days. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those things in there. But I, to me, I think, and actually, in Natalie, we're doing something here, what, um, in so four, five days yeah. almost, where... <clears throat> I think virtually there we're unlimited on what we can do for getting our stuff out there. But all I would say is just like anything else you do when you are going to do this online or virtually, you need to do it continuously, right? Have a plan where you're doing it. Every, like we're doing this, we're doing this every Friday, have a continuous plan. But getting back to the question, um, there's several things you can do. I think some of the easiest we can do right now is run our own virtual workshops, right? Run our own first time home buyers, do an investor workshop. Cause I'm telling you, investors are going to start coming out of the woodworks or very, very soon. So start having those seminars, those workshops virtually start walking through, have your business partners, right? Have a mortgage person, have an attorney, have your finance person, you know, have those people meet up together and, and build out your workshop. I think is always a huge way of doing this. Um, right now, NAR is giving away, I think, two or three classes that they have. One of them is the um, Pricing Strategy Analyst, or I forget what the A stands for, Advisor, but it's a PSA, so people can learn how to price homes. 
So for me, I think one of the, you can get that, you can take the class for free. If you choose to get the certification, you got to pay half the price by the end of the month. But even if you don't, you got the material. So why not say, send out an email or a virtual Facebook, hey, hey, I'm learning this stuff. If you, it, give me some homes, you know, give me some homes and I'll test out on the pricing strategy. So, you know, do that, you know, just go to you. You just got leads because the only ones that are going to truly say yes are people that are going, I'm kind of interested, right? You can do things like that. Um, I think Facebook is always huge. Have something out there. Um, Twitter, I think is still pretty big for doing business. I still get leads every day from Twitter. Uh, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram is the new hotness. That's where I was joking with Carrie because um, me and Carrie sit on one side of the aisle. Marquis, a very sharp lady, very sharp social media person, sits on the other side. She believes in portrait videos where I believe in landscape and so does Carrie. But Instagram's huge right now and that's why she believes in the portrait. Instagram is a very big, powerful tool. Right. But again, and Instagram prefers that vertical, doesn't you know, it? The, yeah, the portrait, the, the portrait avenue. So that's where she believes that's at because that's what people are viewing their phones. They're not viewing their phones like this. She thinks they're viewing their phones like this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You know, time is going to tell if we're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bottom line is we're uh, here to earn a living, right? And close ordeals efficiently. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So that's, you know, all the. But, you know, the, the, the nice thing about prospecting virtually or in, you know, or in real life or in person, IRL, how do you want to say that? The nice thing about all this is everything works right. as long as you do it consistently. I would say just there's more than one way to do things right. So exactly and, uh, right. Yeah. it doesn't have to be the highest quality, highest stuff. You know, one thing, I, one thing, I've, yeah, one thing I've been doing during this time, you have a little more downtime as I'm going to builders models, mm, you know, yeah. interviewing and going through the model with the sales rep. We're doing a little more lengthy video and then having them explain to me on the video, does it make sense to use a realtor or does, or just walk right into the, walk right in without representation? You know, what's the benefit of using a realtor to go into a, a model home and register the first time? Is there a benefit or isn't? And I'm letting them tell me on video what that benefit is. And yes, you should use a realtor. And I tell them, I script them, I say, use like Randy. And so you don't get the other realtors upset. <laughs> but yeah, right. it makes sense to use a realtor like Randy to bring in because here's where that value comes in and it's not costing anymore. So being a little creative and taking, uh, taking a virtual tour of the property like that and then just uploading it to YouTube, getting out to your sphere of influence through social media, and that's proven pretty effective. And then you're connecting. You know, I've had a lot of uh, the builders connect with me and you just start to connect and you, it just builds because they all want that too. Everybody wants it because they're incentivized to sell in their communities. So interviews are such a strong right, strategy. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of the, I think one of the best things you do. And I don't think, I mean, it doesn't even really need to stop that way, right? You're going up to the builders, but if you're trying to build a community, go interview the local restaurants. How are you doing? How are you serving mm -hmm. food? How well, I think, yeah, I think you can become very hyper-local right now mm -hmm. and uh, really decrease your uh, territory or your farming, you know, the areas that you're trying to do business in uh, and just do more in your backyard by using this time to go out and do that very thing. Part of what is intriguing about what we're talking about is a lot of what we're discussing. There are things that the agents can do themselves. And one thing I've noticed in this environment is that there is a very strong focus on conserving expenses, reducing that bottom line, um, the, the expense side. And I, I feel like a lot of what you're talking about is really available to any agent, regardless of whether they're new, they're millennial and they're techie, or if they're more experienced, have been used to going out and doing face-to-face -face brick and mortar, maybe the old fashioned way and that's, the standard way we used to do business, but it's really available to anyone, regardless of where you are in the spectrum. Yeah, I've, all, I've always run pretty much a virtual office, although we had brick and mortar. Uh, but yeah, I've always been one to get rid of all the fluff and just get down, because it's very noisy. So when you talk about that, that's all about the noise, the 4,000 emails, the, 
uh, it's hard to focus and concentrate sometimes. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on all the other platforms. You can get lost in that. I talk to a lot of uh, people about that. They say, yeah, I tried it. And yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, but how, you, know, you have to look at the time spent. And the, so not only just reducing your resources, your expenses, reduce the fluff times, you can have some quality of time. You can, you can close whatever your goals are, two, three, four transactions a month and have a life and do it all on your own without a team. You know, it's all manageable if you do things right. How do you find the consumer, whether it's a seller or whether it's a buyer, how are they embracing this virtual real estate world? Are there challenges that you have in getting them along? Are there challenges with what? Are challenges with getting them along to come alongside you with the virtual market? Are they embracing virtual showings? Are they? Mine are jumping in the car and meeting me at the properties. So I haven't had one virtual showing. They, I'm working with a young couple now about to be married. We were in uh, Carroll Stream and Hoffman Estates yesterday afternoon looking at property. And we're going to be in Algonquin later uh, today. Uh, but yeah, I've, uh, it, we're out there looking at it. You know, it's, it's not, they're, you know, they're wearing, some are wearing the mask, not all of them, but uh, this couple doesn't, you know, they, they wear them based on the uh, request of the homeowner. But if the homeowner doesn't really care, they're, you know, they respect the wishes. But no, they're not afraid to get out and do that, do social distancing during that time. So we haven't had uh, the need to do the, to do that, at least with my clients. I'm sure it'll come up. And when it does, you know, we'll address that. Mandy, are, Mandy, are you in, um, do they have plastic gloves and boot, uh, boot covers? Oh, Nedra, uh, so, some have. Yeah, I was with a nurse and a, another person the other day, and they had, they had the whole getup. And it was funny because we were looking at a foreclosed home that, you know, wasn't, I, I advised them not to take their shoes off. <laughs> right. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it depends on the client. You know, there's some really good uh, hand sprays out there today too, which work just as good as gloves. So uh, it depends on, on the, again, it, you have to respect the wishes of the homeowner. Uh, I'm, in, I'm enforcing what we're asking them to do. So we're not, uh, you know, we're not touching anything in the house, minimize what you're touching, uh, all that, you know, just to respect what, you know, what the rules are right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm finding that it makes a more relaxing situation between the seller and the buyer if those products are there for them to use. Right. I had two, two of the showings I had yesterday, and this is the new reality, too, where the homeowners were there. You know, because they're working at home, they're, uh, they're, they're not working, and the kids are at home. So both of those were great. You know, there were no homeowners. The homeowners were not wearing masks. They, you know, they didn't. Uh, you kind of just use common sense on things, you know. And if you don't have that, get it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you have, to, you have to look at that and you respect in each other. So it's, it's, a, it's an awkward situation, Nedra, sometimes. I mean, for sure. You're walking in because you don't know and you want to respect, first of all, your clients. And, and if you're meeting them for the first time, you know, you're feeling each other out. And, you know, you obviously are making sure that they're healthy. You're not going into an unhealthy situation between you and your clients before you take them into a home and uh, then expose at home to a situation that wouldn't be healthy. Uh, but it is an awkward situation when you're dealing with the clients, then you're going into home, you're dealing with the homeowners. And yeah, yeah. but you kind of roll with the punches on these things. You need, the worst thing you can do is be fearful, I think, sit back, do nothing. You have to be proactive, get out there, put one foot in front of the other, no matter what the situation is, and, and do something productive and efficient. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do, so I think they're throwing a lot of a lot of garbage out there, and you have to sift through that, be discerning, and then move forward. You know, there I met. I have a a listing of 40 acres, and I had the had a realtor come out, and I'm at that showing, 
and uh, so, you know, how are you, how are you doing during this time? She said, I am swamped. I don't know why the other realtors are crying, but I am as busy as can be. Oops, your mic went off. Randy, your mic went off. Oh, there you are. What? Called touch and feel, right? What's that? It's called touch and feel. There, uh, that's what buyers like to do, touch and feel, and it's good yeah. for the sellers. Yeah. One of the things that I teach a lot of uh, training offices is that you need to have a blended approach, especially today, right? You got to have certain amount online, certain amount instructor led, certain amount of distance learning, right? There's just a, a, a blended approach. I really think real estate's going to be that same way, right? You have to have the various blended solutions to have that done, right? You need to be able to give them the options to look at the home virtually. They need, you need to be able to show them physically what the home is because they do want to look at it. You, it's a, a virtual office to me is a blended office. It's an office that gives all the solutions so people can see what, when, and how they want to see it and interact with the way they want to. Um, Just like anything, you want to communicate with your clients like the clients want to be communicated. You know, do you like to text? I have a client as I've been on this uh, call that's been texting me and texting me. And, <laughs> and uh, she likes to text, obviously, and uh, it sent me a few properties to look at. Uh, do you like the email? Do you like the do you like phone call? You know, what is how do you like to be communicated to? And right. we need to be resilient like that. So we can't be so stringent and say, we're only going to do it this way. You know, mm -hmm. this is how I work. It's not how I work. It's how this is how, how do you want to work? Because when I, when I meet with my clients, we agree to do business together. You know, we're going to get along during this next 60, 90 days. Uh, I, I tell them flat out, I'm interviewing you like you're interviewing me, but we both passed the test and now you're my boss. So uh, I'm going to work how you want to work. You know, you're gonna, I'm, I'm the, I'm the experienced person. I'm going to hope you're going to listen to what I have to say. I'm going to give you great advice. I'm going to connect you with some really good people that you should also listen to, but you're my boss. You're going to tell me what to do, what not to do at the end of the day. And I'm going to listen to you, but I'm hoping you're taking my advice into consideration. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um, how many of you guys right now? I'll ask this question because I think this is definitely part of. This. How many of you guys are using tools like DocuSign and Dot Loop or or uh, Sky Slope or even Remind has a signature tool now? How many of you guys are using that for part of your business? Because I see that growing. Because Dot Loop and DocuSign obviously see the need for it because they're giving deals right now as well. They all have discounts going on right at the moment. Yeah, we're using Sky Slope in my office. Yeah. Yeah, I use, I, use DocuSign. I use DocuSign because the company um, pays for it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've been using DocuSign for a long time. I mean, that's nothing new. Yeah. It's only the clients that don't have access to um, any technology that are usually older. Although I have one now that's my age and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm totally immersed in this and you like don't have a clue. Yeah. Because I'm nervous. I, I will just say I'm nervous going out, even though I'm protected, whoever I'm with is protected. I still, you know, could bring that home to my spouse who is very compromised. So mm -hmm. I limit the amount of times that I'm, actually out in public and try to do more virtual everything. Yeah, Patricia, that's really good. And I, I, I've done the same thing. So uh, we were in Sanibel Island when this hit and we came back and my wife got sick and she thought she had COVID. And uh, so we just separated, you know, for a couple of weeks and I took care of her and nursed her back to health. But I really limited what I did and where I went and when I came home. I was really conscientious to not bring anything to her. So for you doing that to your husband is the right thing to do. And you just have to take the extra precautions. Right. And it's funny. I think that regardless of where you are um, in today's environment, so we all approach this differently. And much like Patricia, I'm out and I'm working. And although now I'm not in a closing, we do have people coming in and out of the office because they're still welcome 
to come in and we still have to close. If that's the way they choose to handle the closing, then that's how we'll do them. But going home, my life is very different because yes, we don't want to bring anything home. So the fact yeah. that we shower, we cleanse, you know, I've, I've never been so clean showering at least twice a day. <laughs> uh, we, we do adopt different practices because right. we're trying to do our job every day that we're called to do. And it is still an essential service. We still have to do this. People still need to have somewhere to live. Uh, but at the same time, we're, we have to be smart. And you, whether you work virtually or you have to go out and do a showing, you still need to wrap all of that into your business. And the approach has to be all encompassing, to be safe, to be accurate, to communicate in the way that your clients want you to communicate. There's, it's just a very different platform than what we would have experienced you know, two months ago. And probably we'll be doing it different than this in two months from now. Yeah, we're still very fluid. It'll be interesting to see what we see and what things look like throughout the summer and in early fall, because I think we're still <laughs> dipping our big toe in the water, so to speak. <laughs> I have a question. How do you think these brick and mortar um, offices that, you know, everybody still has a desk and they come into the office and do their, their printing and, you know, mostly walk around and gossip, but <laughs> Do you think those offices are going to become fewer and fewer? And I work for um, one of the big three. And with, you know, the last, what, six, eight weeks, the office has been closed. I mean, we can go in there by ourselves and do what we need to do. But do you think they're going to survive in that kind of environment? Personally, because you've seen this for about the last four years, roughly, you've been seeing a model change for brick and mortar real estate offices, where it's not cubicles, it's not, you know, closed in doors, everybody shuts their door. It's been a much more open environment, right? It's been much more of a, I will say, an Apple store type of look and feel to it. You're seeing that more and more. I think this is going to speed that up because I we still need to socialize. We still need to gossip, right? We still need to interact. We need that energy because one of the things that will happen is we can survive 30, maybe even 60 days on our own. But for most of us, we need the interaction. We need to have the people around us. So you're, I think what you're going to see is the office become um, a biz hub, so to speak, right? You come in to get work, you come in to meet, you come in. So you know, you probably have a bigger training center, maybe a bigger, I don't know, quote unquote, cafeteria style building. And you're going to see a more interaction. You can come and get the printouts. You can come do this, do your business. But I think you're going to see a, um, more of a uh, community environment. Yeah, yeah exactly. Space. Yeah. I think you're going to see that explode in the next few years. And I don't think in just real estate, I think in almost any industry, because almost everybody's had to work from home that is in a corporate environment for the last 60 days and not because the office wants to, but with their kids are home. So they got no choice. They have to work from home. Um, I also think my question is on that line, going back to that is I think, I wonder what real estate is going to look like buildings are going to look like in the next year, two years. I think interior designers, I think um, uh, remodelers are going to be busy because people are going to have to have an office at home that they haven't had to plan for before and not an old bedroom an actual office. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah, I can see that new builders will be building with maybe two offices in a home now and, you know, um, but as far, hers. yeah. <laughs> but as far as your question, Patricia, um, in regards to seeing the offices, um, I am thinking we might see more of a decrease with, with offices, right? Since uh, we can now work from home and your employer can see that you can get the, the job done from home. Why have a brick and molder building, right? Um, I know that there are some banks that actually are at closing some of their branches and um, their employees are now working from home and they're permanently working from home now. So I see that there's going to be other industry I'm predicting that's going to be following that model as well. 
Yeah, both my clients that showed property to yesterday work in buildings and both employers now are saying, you know what? It's working out it better for our, for our employees to be working out of home. We're seeing more product productivity out of them mm -hmm. than we were before. And I think employers typically have been shy to let people work out of the house thinking they're going to be less productive. They're not going to you know, manage your time well and really put a good effort in. But yeah, you, some people are saving two hours a day just by not commuting. Right. That's huge. Right. Um, I'm sure yeah. you're loving this, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just that alone is, uh, I mean, what can you do with two hours a day? You know, some people yeah. use that time efficiently, but not when, when you're driving, it's hard to do. But uh, yeah, a lot less. Uh, as far as real estate offices, I think there's always going to be a mix of those larger, you know, offices that may have brick and mortar, and their model is, uh, you know, having a lot of agents and having fees that support that infrastructure, you know, over a lot of them. Uh, but I, I think this is also going to open up the eyes of a lot of agents that are like, wow, you know, we can actually work independently at home, productively, efficiently. We don't have to go into the office, have the you know, the chat around the water cooler and the gossip and the time spent <laughs> talking to others as much as some like that. But uh, real estate can be done so efficiently. It could be such a rewarding career to where you can make a really decent living and have a life. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah, and not know, pay the big fees. Not pay the big fees, not have the big expenses. I mean, you can work really lean and mean mm -hmm. and not get distracted. Uh, one of the frustrations to me recently has been this HomeSnap Pro product. I don't know about you, but I get so many emails from HomeSnap that I'm just putting them in my spam now. I don't think it's a good product, but I don't like their approach. And it's very uh, frustrating to have them you know, spamming me so often with their emails. Uh, I I you, would put that comment. I would write a report ticket to MRED on that because the the CEO of MRED sits on the board of that, and I know she wants to hear that stuff. Yeah, because I like the product, but I don't like I don't like them. Yeah, <laughs> so no, I totally I like get it. I mean, there's several products that I do I don't do just for that same reason. Um, yeah. yeah. With the home staff, though, you can limit the amount of emails they send you. Like right now. I'm getting two a day, but I could turn that down, you know, to maybe once a week. So still not. there is that option. Yeah. And I'm getting a lot of leads from HomeSnap. So as I said, it seems like a great product. So, but I, I get irritated with it. So <laughs> communication is tough. I mean, it's a Probably. tough balance. Yeah. It is. Actually, I think what everybody is saying is you have to be an expert in both areas or all areas, or try to be, because you have some of the past, you have some right now, and you also have the future coming in big time. Yeah, Nedra, I think I think we all have to keep an open mind and uh, you know, and just. Uh, be willing to, but you know, again, not get distracted. Gotta, it's so important to stay focused with what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Justin's shaking his head because he, especially being a techie guy and and doing the training, what he does, I'm sure he does not have enough time in a day to see everything out there and explore everything out there. And then go throw a ball with his kid and go take a hike and everything else he might want to be doing. I, I've actually had to turn on my phone and put on the distraction mode because there's a tool inside the Android that will, it's called focus mode. I've actually had to turn that on because I'm getting so caught up in the things that I don't need to be caught up in. It's like, okay, I got to get out. <laughs> right, right. And, I, you know, so. So, yeah, no, I'm all over that. And the problem is, is you're right, right? I'm trying to keep up on all the tech so I can teach this and talk to people about it and. I don't have enough. I'm a slow reader. I mean, when I mean slow, it'll take me a year to read a page. I'm slow. Um, so one of the, one of the best apps I have downloaded recently is an app called pocket and it's been around for years, but I, I have finally just discovered it or at least the benefits for me. So when I go walking, I usually walk about three miles a day. Pocket will read me the articles. Oh, nice. I was like, I love that. I get my time back. <laughs> 
Nice. But your walk is also productive. Right, exactly. I need to do it because I'm sitting here <laughs> way too much. <laughs> And I'm not exercising enough. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, it, you're right, Randy, the distractions are huge. And for me, I, you know, I would say, yes, we, we, in our industry, especially as entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, we have to kind of be able to master all we got to communicate with the people that don't want to be the tech savvy. We got to also prepare for the future, whatever's coming from, but we can't master it all. Right. It is just too tough. Yeah. My thought is, and this is where I think partnerships are huge. This is where I, and I, I appreciate Teresa always jumping on board with this when I throw ideas out, is finding someone that can be the, the yin to your yang is also, I think is also a nice benefit for this stuff because maybe you don't have time to research, but they can, re they can recite that out. Like I team up with Carrie quite a bit. We will sit there. If you cannot tell our conversation style, in the first 10 minutes, that conversation had five different topics. <laughs> that's how we talk so for me when knowing that I was doing this today I'm like okay we got to stop that we got to get focused we got to come back into this um and Teresa did a good job of kind of even wrangling us back in because it can go all over the board but having those partnerships I think is also extremely huge because in the time that we're dealing with this stuff right now we've got to have someone else that thinks about things a little differently that can bring that that outside perspective for you without having you to be the research guy for all topics and I think that's important in our business as much as it is in educational opportunities and conversations like this. Um, because for me, I think that having events like this or the Women's Council Thursday Thursdays or whatever it is, it gets me that social interaction that I'm missing because I'm not seeing those business associates who are not only business associates, but they've also become friends. And so I, I too miss seeing them. This allows us to do that, but it also shares some different perspectives because I might think I know what you as agents are experiencing out there in the world but I really don't because I'm sitting in here in the title company side of things and likewise you guys probably have a very specific image of what's happening at the closing table these days and it might be different but I, I enjoy these opportunities to have those conversations and just bring different tools and different ways that we're working to light because even though we do something different with our day there's probably a lot of overlap and a lot of ways that I can learn to be more efficient and better at what I do and maybe share as well. And drink wine. That's always good too. <laughs> Speaking of, do we have a, I think we have our thirsty Thursday happening tonight because we didn't make it happen last night. Oh, you guys have it tonight, do you? I think so. I saw something earlier, but I haven't had a chance to follow up. <laughs> it's all about timing. Well, that is a perfect segue. This is, we're at the top of the hour. Um, if you guys have anything you want to share in addition, anything you want to add to this, I appreciate it. I appreciate your time being here. As always, this is recorded, so you can tell people to come back and find it if they didn't make it. If you want to share it, let me know. I'll definitely give you the links. It'll be on YouTube and all that. I wanted to go YouTube Live, but I screwed something up, so I couldn't do YouTube Live on this. We're always trying to increase and change this a little bit, so... Thanks everybody for being here. And if you want to say anything, great. If not, have a great day. Yeah, make an announcement for the 14th. Oh, 14th. Thank you. Yeah, see? Well, you should have done it, Natalie. Um, 14th, we are doing a YPN event. Kind of not tied to this, but we did talk about a little things on here. Um, basically, um, how to say top of mind, right? What are the ways to say top of mind? It's uh, a webinar style via reference by the RAV YPN. It will be... Uh, what time, Natalie? I forget. I know it's on my calendar, but. It is at three, from three to four. Three. So three to four, we'll have that. It'll be top of mind, different strategies. You know, uh, we might steal that one from Randy about interviewing business builders. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. That's great. Go for it. <laughs> so, um, well, we hope to see everybody on next week. Yeah, it'll be great. So yeah, do that. And then again, business builders coming up in a couple weeks, so. And just a plug for a women's council. Um, I'm going to hop off here and go to my first virtual meeting. Would have loved to have been in Washington, DC, but <laughs> pivoting. That's right. <laughs> Plus it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so have well, a great day, All right. Three Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a great Friday. Thanks. Have a great Friday all.
Bye. Bye. Enjoy the walk, Thanks. Randy. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Bye. Okay. He's We're going to put him in the waiting room and we